Hey, welcome. Today's ride, undulating profile, 45 minutes with a block of muscle tension intervals after the warm up. Let's get you nice and settled on the bike and then I'll talk you through what's ahead. Hands nice and soft as always. Don't over grip those handlebars. Little bend at the elbows. Shoulders pull back and down. Chest up. Big deep breaths. In through the nose. Out through the mouth. Checking those bum bones are supported on the saddle. Little shimmy, make sure you're good and comfy. Just checking down. Feet nice and neutral at the bottom of the stroke. Opening from the hip, driving down on that power phase. Nice and light on those gears. Numbers this side of the screen to help you out. Effort level, FTP if you know your power, percentage of FTP, or percentage of max heart rate. You can use any of those as a guide. So today, it's undulating. You've got four six minute blocks at around about 85% FTP, which is just, just below 80% max heart rate, keeping it aerobic all the way through. 85% FTP, that kind of effort level, bottom end of sweet spot. Gonna hew Pretty, pretty smart with your numbers, you should be getting in a 24 minute block, which is quite a significant amount on a 45 minute ride, in sweet spot. Building that aerobic base. Building muscular endurance. Now, what is special about MTIs, muscle, muscle even, <laughs> tension intervals? We're looking at a kind of a top end of moderate gear loading. Should feel it in the legs. It's not so much a really hard aerobic session today, so you shouldn't be really panting for breath, but your legs are gonna feel it. So the trick with this kind of level of intensity is we're looking to be at the bottom of our cadence range. 60 RPM. It's important to get the physiological benefit out of this workout, to work at that really low cadence. You're going to be recruiting the fast twitch muscles. And it's kind of a bit of a, a leg buster. Really going to feel it in the legs. Another big advantage to doing this lower cadence work is so you've got a fairly good chance of getting some really good glute activation. Now you know how I keep banging on about opening from the hip, not driving through the knee, recruiting those powerful muscles at the back. Your glute muscles, your bum muscles, are short, wide muscles, really good for endurance. Nice and fluid on the legs here. Checking my RPM. Two versions of this workout. There's gonna be one with music. Or if we head on over to the other playlist, there's a version without music. And you can play your own, your own tunes, your own music, top volume, but you still get the instruction. So two options. So when we jump in at seven minutes in, to that first interval, just checking my timing here. 
like just less than two minutes to go. We're going to drop right down to that 60 RPM. Now the music I have chosen is bang on 60 RPM all the way through. So if you can, you can stick to that music. If you haven't got a cadence meter or you're using your own music and you're not quite sure what 60 RPM looks like, you can work that out for yourself. You need to clock, look at a wall if you haven't got a bike computer, and then put your hand up against your knee, one. Let me just get, get this in the right place. And you're gonna count, look at the clock, over a 15 second period, at 60 RPM, you want your knee to hit your hand once a second, so in 15 seconds, that's 15 bangs into your hand. Just count them. And that'll give you 60 RPM. And you could do that for any RPM. Just checking my screen here. So we've got a little ramp up here on the warm up. Just slowly loading the gears. Just look over here for the effort level. Jumping in in 30 seconds. You're going to load, I'm auto loading on my smart trainer, so I'm not going to change gear, but I will call it out for you. In about 15 seconds, you're going to start loading that gear on, and then we're jumping straight into that first six minute block. Five, three, two, one. And that's going to drop straight into the legs. Get it on, folks. Load it up. Oh, that's kind of nice, not? Let's just get my screen up here. Right. Now I am doing, bang on, slow it down a little bit, a bit over-enthusiastic, 60 RPM. Now then, quick note here, folks. Got any knee problems? Please be careful with these really heavy, heavily loaded intervals at low RPM, low cadence. Right, I'm bang on, 60 RPM. So, shouldn't be so tricky with the breathing, but I can tell you for sure, I can feel that in my legs already. Keep it soft on the hands. Smile. <laughs> Six minutes of that. Whew. Sounds easy on paper. 85% FTP. Just, you know, around about 78, 80% max heart rate. Sounds really easy. I can tell you it is not. Now, at these lower cadences, I am really concentrating on my pedaling technique. Really working hard to extend from the hip, not driving through the knee. Woohoo! Coming up, two minutes done. How does that feel? So, check in with those knees, folks. Too much, back off. Just build into it. Now, if your bike setup is not spot on, another reason why you might feel this in the front of the knee. Too far forwards over the spindle. So if your patella's forwards of the spindle at the, at the um, three o'clock point, as you're driving, that's when you get through too much tension in the wrong part of the knee. So really important you've got good bike set up for these heavy intervals. Heart rate's gone up already, look. Now if they're not up already, this is the first I'm recording in a series of four little cheeky winter workouts for you. Got a nice little ring, hasn't it? Winter workouts. Well, not so much, I'm not a big fan of the winter, but 
Good opportunity. Whilst you're stuck on the turbo or your indoor bike, makes a difference. To do some little very specific kind of training or some drills that will really help you out and pay dividends when you can get back on the road or you're into your kind of race part of your season or your performance part of the season. How you doing? Now, if you cannot feel this anywhere in your legs, I would suggest you're either you've got too much RPM or you've not got anywhere near enough gear on. This, this feels quite unpleasant if I'm truthful. <laughs> Having said that, I do a lot of MTIs in my turbo sessions, personal turbo sessions over the winter. Great way to get that sweet spot training in. I'm just going to have to turn the fan on. There's me thinking, it's really cold in my gym today. I am not going to need that fan, but I am <laughs> already. There we go. Keep that nice deep breathing going, keeping that control. Nice one, a minute and a half to go. Six minutes of effort, three minutes of recovery, recovery even. <laughs> Spinning the legs nice and freely on the recovery, dropping the gear, dropping the resistance and breathing, getting that heart rate back down. My heart rate is bang on, spot on here. Not, not really high, as I said. I tend to get a higher heart rate with the higher cadences as you have to really work those muscles quickly. So not so much in the heart today, more in the legs. Nice one. Come on, keep it going. Now, as I said, uh, I've designed this workout on the bottom end of Sweet Spot, 85%. Equally, just less than 30 seconds to go, by the way. Equally, you could pick, uh, you know, if you find this a little easy, you can pick much higher percentage FTP or heart rate. So anything between 84, 97%, almost done here, of your FTP. Recovery's coming, folks. Two, one, drop the gear. Drop it right down. Keep breathing. Has your heart rate gone up quite high? Are you settling into it? First, first interval for me is always a bit, mm, body's not quite sure what's needed. As I get into it, it all gets a little bit easier. Body kind of catches up. Cheers. So as I was saying, you could change this workout up. Picking different level of intensity. Anything in your sweet spot range. They're gonna to be tough. You try and sit there. I mean, physiologically, you can, you can sit there at 97% of your FTP. Mentally, however, not so much fun. Two more minutes recovery. Let's just take a little breather here and get that heart rate under control. Remember, always let the abs go, just let it go. Keep your shoulders down. There we go. Being thoroughly back in control. Nice one. Three to go. I mean, I guess, instead of kind of sticking to a, uh, a steady um, effort level for each of the four efforts, uh, you could maybe, I don't know, you could do, you could pyramid up. So you could maybe do 85% of the first one. Oh, 
then 92, then 97 for the last one. Or do it the other way around, 97, 92, 89, 85, for each of the efforts. Or slowly increase it through the six minute effort. I mean, all sorts of different options. Don't just stick to what I'm saying here. Kind of think outside the box a little bit. Change it round and just use the structure to work for you. Go in 30 seconds. So it's gonna go back on, so get ready with those gears. So I've just stopped my tempo just a little bit there and then I'm gonna drop it back down again in 15 seconds. Back to 60 RPM. Three, two, one, get it on, slow, slow. How are the knees? All good? Now, if you are only on these efforts, feeling it in your quads, that is because on the drive phase, which is between 12 and five o'clock-ish, or there or thereabouts, on that kind of main drive phase, you are extending mainly through the knee. So as you pedal, as you do on the drive phase, you are extending the hip and extending the knee to get the leg straight. So on that drive phase, to extend the hip, you are using the muscles at the back, glutes, hamstrings. And to extend the knee, we're using the muscles at the front. So these quads, they cross both the hip and the knee joint and they are contracting, getting shorter to extend that knee. Muscles at the back contracting to open the hip. A little question for you. <laughs> On the up stroke, and if you've seen one of the other videos, this is going to answer this straight away. On the up stroke, those same muscles are working, but what are they doing? From the bottom, back up to the top. It's called a number of different phases, recovery phase, rest phase, from the bottom, back to the top. And we'll do some drills to help you act to get really efficient pedaling. Look, it's almost two minutes done yakking away at you as normal. <laughs> Two minutes done in that six minute block. How are your legs? Are they complaining just a little bit? Oh, I'm trying to just zone mine out. Just pretend la la la, nothing happening here. So I really work hard with that breathing. Keep the control. If you feel like you're losing it, soft on the hands, close the eyes. Deep, deep breath in through the nose. And then make sure you exhale as fully as you can through the mouth. It's really important you exhale as much as possible because your inhale response is stronger. So make sure you get rid of all of that CO2. CO2? I see now I'm questioning myself, carbon dioxide, not oxygen. I see I'm not, I'm not a physicist, I'm not a chemist, <laughs> biologist even. <laughs> I should know that, that is really shocking. Now I'm embarrassed. <laughs> oh, I can feel the comments already. There they go. La, 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 la. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate on this instructing lark. Really questioning myself. How are you doing with that pedal stroke? If you've got a bike computer and it shows you a cadence, normally just says RPM, revolutions per minute, that's the number you're looking for, 60. Don't drop below 60. Oh, now I can really feel my glutes. 
has to be said. But I am a glute dominant athlete. I do tend to favour my glutes. Not intentionally, it just happens. I get most of my power from my glutes. Really feel that. Now, if you're just feeling it in the quads, as I said, that's because you're driving from the knee. You want to really work on opening the hip. Boom, boom. Kind of getting into a rhythm. And if you're playing your own music, how's that doing? Is that helping you along? Don't play something too, with too high a tempo because it will encourage you subliminally to really up the leg speed. And this is all about keeping it slow. Got to have slow RPM to build that tension in the muscles. One minute to go. Uh, I confess, I like doing MTIs, but then I'm just a little bit weird. Has to be said, I kind of like it. So when I'm climbing on the road, mountains, my kind of default leg speed is around about 67 to 70 RPM. It's my climbing leg speed. Which is not really, really slow, but it's not really quick. So these are kind of my territory. And mentally, if you can get used to how this feels, 10 seconds to go, folks, for that recovery. Get ready to unload the gear and load the resistance. Three, two, one, release. Let go of all that gear. Really drop it right down. Maybe up that leg speed just a little bit. Now I just realised I've not been very generous with my recovery FTP. I would probably go. Oh, actually, I've got 60% FTP on here. You might want to go as low as 55 actually, drop it right down into zone one. It just will allow you to get your heart rate back under control quicker. Oh, I'm having to really work here to breathe, to get that heart rate down. Two done, halfway through. What is not to love? And all that time in sweet spot. Big aerobic base building. Just what you want to do over the winter. Get those efforts in. Uh, I'll put the TSS score, if you're interested, for this ride in the description. Based on a ramp warm up from 55% up to 70% FTP. Uh, and then the efforts, 85% FTP. Recovery 60 FTP and then a five minute cool down. Um, as I said, I'll pop those, I'll pop the TSS score in so you can get an idea if you haven't got a smart trainer and you're having to auto set with your gears to try and get it fairly close to that TSS. Nice one. Just over two more minutes left. Shouldn't get much heart rate drift on this because we're staying aerobic maybe a little bit towards the end. Try and keep a lid on your heart rate, max heart rate. If it's sneaking towards 85%, you need to back off because you're heading into threshold territory and that's not what this is about. It's a tempo ride, zone three, bottom end of swing spot. We don't want to tip over into Zone four lactate threshold. Going in about 20 seconds-ish. Numbers of the top cocks, cocks here, I think, cocks here. Not here, obviously, really here. Four, 15 seconds to go. So this is strength training on the bike, folks. We're going in five seconds. So are you ready to load that gear? 
third effort coming. Let's get it on. Load it in, feel it feed into the legs, slow the legs down. Easy does it. So how many of you do off-bike strength training? Question? <laughs> or do you just ride your bike? Which is fine, which is great. Uh, if you really want to maximise, over the winter especially, that's when you get your strength and conditioning training in to build the muscular strength. Exercises off the bike that are really useful. Um, squats, obviously. You want to kind of be replicating which muscles are really recruited in the pedal stroke. Uh, squats are great. Uh, if you've not done squats before, just start with your body weight. Just, you know, Google, YouTube it. You can do front loaded squats, bar squats at the back, kettlebells, all sorts of dumbbells. All sorts of different types. Build up to it. What you want to be trying to do, if you do a lot of squats normally, um, you, if you're interested, I can give you some guidance on a kind of short program that you can use. Um, very specific kind of squats and lunges, quite heavy weights to build that muscular strength. There's a little program I do every winter with squats, lunges and hamstring curls. Very specific. Uh, single leg deadlifts are great uh, to work on your hamstrings. Um, again, YouTube it. You can do uh, body weight, better with weights, mind. It's an asymmetric move, which is good because you can work on any weaknesses you've got between legs. Squats, obviously, is both legs at the same time. Um, so single leg deadlifts are great. Asymmetric work is good to uh, spot any weaknesses. Uh, if you want to be working, hip flexors. Again, if you look at some of the other videos in this little winter series, you will see how important your hip flexors are. I'll just give a little bit away. They tend to be fairly weak because we don't use them that much. But if you can strengthen your hip flexors, that's three minutes done, halfway, you will be doing yourself and your pedal stroke quite a lot of favours. Uh, exercises for hip flexors. Uh, something called a psoas march. That is spelled P-S-O-A-S, a psoas march. Uh, I might demo one of those actually and pop it on the screen. Um, yeah, I'll do that. I'll demo a psoas march uh, and show you here what it is. Or seated straight leg raises or standing bent leg raise, again, asymmetric movement. Either of those, I'll demo those, very easy to do. Uh, and you can work up, you can, make, you can have progressions to make them harder. <sighs> Two minutes to go. Is my talking helping? <laughs> or have you zoned me out? What was Chris saying? I didn't hear a thing. Um, just trying to give you little tips. I see, it's getting a little bit warmer. I see I'm not sweat, sweat, sweating. Definitely warm. Heart rate's gone a little bit awry, but that's because I'm talking to you lovely folks, not concentrating on my own ride here, because it's not about me here. It's about your effort, not my effort, your effort. I don't take much, much notice of my heart rate when I'm doing these to instruct you. If I was doing this on my own, it'd be bang on. Not so much when I'm talking. Get the adrenaline going. One minute to go, folks. Just over. I 
15 seconds of the ride to go. But one effort. Has that gone pretty quick? I think for a 45 minute workout, broken down into these blocks, time goes fairly quickly. I mean, my legs, I don't know about yours, my legs are kind of not very happy with me right now. But that's par for the course. <laughs> 30 seconds to go. I just block them out. La la. This is probably the shortest in terms of time for an MTI workout that I would personally do. Uh, I would tend to do normally an hour, minimum. This is just a little introduction for you if you've not done them before. Ah, release it. There we go. Recover. I mean, I'm quite happy to change the times around a little bit, push them out a little bit longer. You up for seven minutes, eight minutes of MTI? Are you? <laughs> Let me know if you are. Let's push it out. Eight minutes. And push it out to an hour. Hour 15. What do you think? We can do that. Just gonna go down to my drops. Hanging out here and recovering with you. There we go. Getting that lovely control back. Now I'm recording this. And the weather's pretty rubbish at the minute, if I'm truthful. And I set myself a goal last week. I didn't quite get there, but I almost did. I kind of set myself 10 hours on the turbo and to get on the turbo every day last week. I did manage every day, didn't quite manage the 10 hours, but I did get quite a lot of distance in, <laughs> which I was fairly chuffed with. Do you do that? You kind of, I don't know about you, if I set myself a goal, oh, I don't like bailing on that. If I kind of write, I'm gonna do that this week, even if I'm not feeling 100% mentally or physically, I kind of just will, I feel obliged to do it. So I did it. Just less than a minute, team, to the last one. And you know, I, I feel, it's good, isn't it, when you do something like that and you, you achieve it. I've got quite a lot of recording to do this week. So I've just got to save myself just a little bit. Kind to your bodies, yeah? Kind to your mind, kind to your body. Be nice to yourself. We are going in 20 seconds and getting that last one done. Please let me know in the comments if you like this. Well, like, or well, you know what I mean. Yes, good. Do you want some more of these? I'm happy to do some more MTIs because I do them anyway, so no big shakes. Three, two, Oh, I'm getting on. Come on, load it up. You know you want to. Get the gear on. Get that resistance on. Oh, is that kind of just dropped straight into the leg? So, I mean, the thing, or, or have you started to go, oh, maybe I'll not just put that last bit of effort in because my legs are a little bit tired. Have you done that? Do not do that. Uh, uh, lovely little feature with these smart trainers. You see, you can program your workout, and I've got no choice. It sets my percentage FTP, and I have no choice. My legs just have to do it. I have to do it. I'm doing it, are you doing it? Come on, get in there. Do not give up. Ooh. Well, I'm getting a little bit warm. In fact, yeah, the fan's gonna have to go up. It's not I'm talking to you, I'm too excited, that's the problem. 
There we go. Keep those nice deep, deep breaths going as we get towards the pointy end of the workout. Last little blip in the road. Or you can coast home. Check that RPM. So my legs are bang on. 80 RPM. Do the leg check. Check out your bike computer. So have the muscles changed that you can feel in your legs? Has it all gone to quads now? Or have they kind of given up the ghost and gone, ah, 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 done, ah, done. And your glutes have had to take over. On a kind of a short ride like this, might not happen. Now, if you're out on a really long ride, long effort, climbing in the Alps, say, 30K climb, it's gonna go on, isn't it? If you're doing that kind of effort, where it's just a relentless, steady climb, you might start off really using the quads. But, but they will, they're long and thin, those muscles. Not so powerful as these. You find, just by default, your glutes might start to take over. So if you can recruit those earlier in the ride, and not over fatigue these quads, that's good. Halfway! Yes! Awesome effort! How you doing? Let's get this done. Big deep breaths. Just driving through those legs. Oh. Keeping it fluid. Oh, I'm just aware here that I've kind of got into a nice gentle rhythm. Try not to get too much upper body movement. And I'm just kind of letting that rhythm release from the pedals up through the body. Two minutes, team! <laughs> well, I don't know about you, I think that went pretty quick. <laughs> I can hear you all shouting at me, no, it did not! It did not come quick! <laughs> My legs are not happy. <laughs> Soft on the hands, come on, keep the control. Keep it relaxed. Now, if you're playing your own music, is it helping you to the end? So if you're looking for music, if you're checking out music to use, so you want 60 BPM or 120. Either of those, because you can go on the half beat. I do believe, you know, Keep going. Fluid all the way. You've got this. All the way, 30 seconds. Make every single pedal stroke. Come on team, you've got this. Are you smiling at me? Or throwing things? Or maybe not saying nice things, are you? <laughs> Less than 10 to go. Five, four, three, two, one. 
drop that gear. Ah, brave. Lovely. Give yourself a pat on the back. And if you're stuck to those numbers, 24 minutes in the bank in sweet spot, I'll have that. Thank you very much. Definitely. So it shouldn't be really bad puddle around the bike territory today. Leg busting territory though. Good. Nice effort. So just going to give you five minutes cool down block here. As always, if you feel you need longer to cool down, if your legs are feeling tight. Um, personally, I would normally do 10 minutes plus cool down, but I feel I'm pushing it to sit and talk to you for 10 minutes. <laughs> But please do keep your legs going if you need to. Moving the waste products to lactate out of the muscles. So we'll be kept below threshold, but you're still creating lactate. I know we talk about lactate threshold, but you're still create, creating lactate even at the lower intensities. So making sure that it doesn't sit in those muscles. You want to expel it around the body, into the blood. Keep the legs going. Three more minutes to go. Comments. Leave your comments. How did you like that? I love your comments. I love reading your comments. Great. Those of you that take the time to leave comments, thanks. It's really, really appreciate it. And I'll try and get back to you as quickly as I can. Keep those legs moving. Keeping it fluid. Oh. Feeling good. Let's do some breathing drills here to just make sure that heart rate's coming right, right down. So letting the tummy just relax. Big breath into the nose for four. Hold for one and then big exhale through the mouth. Do two more times. Guarantee your heart rate will drop off the cliff. Getting that control right back feels good. Have you subscribed to the channel? If you have, thank you very much. Please subscribe. And if you like that workout, give me a thumbs up. And answer any of my dumb questions. <laughs> Leave it in the comments. Be great. Just less than a minute to go. Uh, more than a minute, just, just about a minute even. Still, I haven't got my glasses on. Uh, and I've got a new bike computer and the, num and the writing's smaller, which is not ideal, but never mind. Fully in control now, heart rate's come back under control. Feeling good, yep. About 40 seconds to go. If those other workouts are, are up yet, then do take a look. I'm going to call a winter series. Let's call a winter series. I mean, you don't have to do them in the winter, obviously, but they're just the kind of training I tend to do over the winter. Coming up to 15 seconds to go, folks. Nice one. Nearly there. Keep those pedal strokes going all the way to the end. And we are done. Thank you very much for watching, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. 
Till next time.